Hello out there in Nala land. We are now continuing with the concepts of staka and charity as they pertain to being an honorable mensch. I'm dipping again into the wonderful book of Rabbi Joseph Tolushkin, his Code of Jewish Ethics. And our class, as always, is Lila Nishmas Rachalei Abbas Chaim Tzvi Aleh Shalom. We continue and we resume. How important are the motives for giving charity? Uh, the benefits rendered by charitable giving are so significant that God will credit the person for what they've done, even if their intentions were not altruistic. Even if your exclusive intention was for your own betterment, since you did something that's worthy of giving charity, that will certainly make up for the fact that your intentions were not altruistic. Because many people are less generous than they could be, for they're afraid that they may diminish their assets. The Shulchan Aruch rules, it paskins, indeed this is the Rambam and Hilchus Matnas and Iyim, it rules that your assets will never be diminished by giving charity. That's a law, that's a Jewish law. And this is the famous Gemara, it's Gemara Saita, pardon me, it's Gemara in Tainus Daftes, that Aser, Kadei Bishvil Shatis Aser. The Torah says you have to give a mitzvah, you have a mitzvah to give a tenth of your income to charity, and... We learn out from here that you must give it. If you give a tenth, it's a play on words. Asir kadesh tis asir. If you give a tenth, asir tis asir, you will become wealthy. By giving, you actually get more. And God says it's the only place there is a prohibition to test God. We are not out to test God and and have questions that why is it that these tragedies, these travesties occur? But God tells you in this one area you may trust, you may test, test me. And that's as far as giving a tenth of your income to charity. If you give it away, you will never lose. The Gemara says in Tainus Daf Tes, Asher Bishvil Tisis Asher, and tells a story. And the Gemara says that even though there's a prohibition not to tell, not to not to test God, not to test God, not to test God. Nonetheless, in this regard, in this one area, you are you are not only permitted, you are encouraged to test God, and. Uh, God assures you, and he's the one person, the one who can do this, that he'll pass the test. Okay. And there's another important incentive in giving charity, and that's the verse in Proverbs and Mishle, Tzedakah Tatzel Mimavis, giving charity will save from death. That's quite a guarantee. Charity saves from death. And there is a fellow who's written num- numerous books. I've seen him quoted, uh, Rabbi Danny Siegel, who's really, really going to town explaining how important it is to give charity and look out for those who are uh, destitute. And he has an interesting insight, is that charity saves from death. And he says that even when you think there's nothing left to be done, there's always something that can still be done, and that is to give charity. Now I'm going to read to you now a story. I, I apologize, I'm not the greatest reader in the world. It's a very moving story, a short story by, called Charity by Hugh Nissen, Nissenson. It's in a book, if I recall, the title is Charity Saves from Death. I think the title of the book is In the Reign of Peace. When I was quite a little boy, I heard the story read by Rabbi Riskin, and remarkably, when he read the book in the audience, was the author of the short story. So let me take you to this moving story, uh, which is set in New York City's Lower East Side in 1912. And the story is narrated by the 12-year-old boy uh, who describes how his father is a finisher of men's pants, working 12 hours a day and earning $7 a week. The mother is able to supplement the income with another $3, and the boy remembers that he always went to bed hungry, as the net income of the family was $10 a week. But on the Shabbos, on Sabbath, the family always ate well. And the mother recalls how his mother would water in anticipation, how his mouth would water in anticipation of that Friday night meal. Okay, so let me read to you the story. Enough of my commentary. The story speaks for itself. On that Friday night, his father, a religious Jew, would always bring home a guest even poorer than they. Often the guest would remain for the entire Shabbos. And some would snore so loudly that the boy had trouble sleeping. And when he complained about this, his father would always respond, Remember, charity saves from death. One winter, the boy's mother contracted, contracted pneumonia. Soon her coughing escalated and she began to spit blood. Finally, one Friday afternoon, with life at stake, she was hospitalized and the boy was sent to do the Shabbos shopping normally done by his mother. I will add here as a parenthetical comment, 
In those days, going to the hospital usually was the final step. You went to the hospital to die. And it's quite clear that the mother who's spitting blood with pneumonia and without proper medical attention, why she's going to the hospital. The boy goes out shopping. When he returns home, his father, as always, had invited a guest. At dinner, the man, Rebrifkin, told them, Would you believe it? Except for a little salted herring and a glass of tea, this is the only thing I've had to eat in my mouth for six days. As always, the guest snored, but this time it didn't bother the young boy. Late that night, he spoke to his father and told him, I feel much better now. Do you? the father asked. Why? Because Mama will get well. How can you be so sure? the boy. Did I? the father answered. When? You said that charity saves from death. But what's that got to do with Mama?